As long as I've had a smart home, I've been a massive fan of Zigbee devices. Over the years, I've used both ZHA and Zigbee to MQTT with Home Assistant and learned a lot about how to create a rock solid and stable Zigbee network. In fact, I made a whole YouTube video about it with tips on how to get the best performance and reliability. And when I bought my new home, I was clearly going to continue using Zigbee as my main smart home protocol. Now with all that, you think I'd have the bestest and most reliable Zigbee network in the world, right? Wrong. Everything was going great when I moved into the new house and started my renovations. I replaced all of my light switches with Zigbee smart switches that acted as routers, and they were supposed to create a solid mesh network backbone throughout my house that all my other Zigbee devices could connect to. I added more and more Zigbee devices over the course of a few months, more than a hundred in total. Motion sensors, contact sensors, temperature sensors, LED strips, smart bulbs, you name it. Then about six months in, things started to get weird. Randomly, whole swaths of my network would just go offline in a sort of cascading failure. One by one, devices would drop off the network, and the only way to get them back was to repair them manually. Sometimes the devices would work fine again for about five or six weeks, and then it would just happen again. Sometimes it would happen again just a few days later. I could not figure out what was going on, and it was driving me crazy. I almost threw the entire Zigbee network in the Bing and switched to Z-Wave or Wi-Fi. But eventually, I figured it out, and I was able to solve the problem by buying this. A network-connected Zigbee adapter. This video is the story of how I tore my hair out trying to learn what was happening, did a bunch of stuff to try and fix it that really didn't help, and eventually solved the problem. Let's take a look. The first thing I thought might be the problem was interference from 2.4 GHz Wi-Fi networks. I went to a lot of trouble to set up my own Unify access points in a specific way so that they only used Wi-Fi channels that were away from the channel that I was using for my Zigbee network. But perhaps my neighbors were using Wi-Fi channels that were clashing. I got out my trusty Wi-Fi sniffer app on my Android phone and walked around my house. But nope, it didn't seem like there was anything around that was overlapping my channels with a particularly strong signal strength. Back to the drawing board, as they say. Now, one of the things I always tell people when they ask me about Zigbee best practices is to put your Zigbee coordinator, hub, or dongle somewhere in the middle of your house so that the signal spreads outwards. Of course, I completely ignored my own advice when building my network and plonked my Zigbee coordinator in the basement. It was attached to a long USB extension cable, so at least it was outside of my comms rack, and I figured that the mesh backbone would have taken care of connecting all the devices, so it wouldn't make too much difference where I put it. I took another look at it and realized that I'd placed it right next to my main electrical distribution box, near some wireless access points far away from the middle of my house. In hindsight, that seemed pretty stupid, and surely there was something here causing interference that was going to be the source of all my problems. I needed to find a way to move my coordinator away from this electromagnetic hellscape and somewhere into the middle of my house. I toyed with the idea of getting a really long USB extension cable and running it up the stairwell, but that seemed just as stupid and I have really no idea how far USB signals can effectively travel along an extension cable. I did a bit of searching around and discovered that Zigbee to MQTT has the ability to connect to remote Zigbee adapters and that there was a tool called Sir2Net which could help me with this. It seemed that I could take a Raspberry Pi, which I happen to have sitting spare in my cupboard, and plug my USB coordinator into that. I could then run this Sir2Net tool, which I assume stands for Serial to Network or something, and then it would pipe all of the traffic from the USB port of my Pi over the home network and then to Zigbee to MQTT. I could then put the Pi somewhere in the middle of my house, far away from the basement interference and closer to the majority of my Zigbee devices. The big advantage of this is that I could use the same USB Zigbee coordinator, which meant that I wouldn't need to repair any of my Zigbee devices. It seemed like a good idea to try, so I installed the Raspberry Pi operating system onto the SD card of my Pi, SSH'd into it, and installed Sir2Net using the instructions on the Zigbee to MQTT website. If you want to do all this at home, I've written up an article on my Home Automation Guy website which has all the instructions and commands along with screenshots so that you can set this up at your leisure without having to pause the video and try and write things down off the screen. I've linked to the article in the description below. Anyway, I got all of this set up, stopped Zigbee to MQTT on my Home Assistant server, switched over the coordinator, and then reconfigured Zigbee to MQTT to point to the IP address and port of Sir2Net on my new Raspberry Pi. Success. 
everything seemed to be working fine, and I didn't have to repair anything. I was pretty happy with this because I'm always a bit paranoid when I start messing around with the foundations of my Zigbee network. It's a key part of my smart home and everything relies on it. But then, a couple of weeks later, it all went to shit again. The exact same thing happened, and I cried. I then thought that maybe there could be something wrong with my coordinator. So back to the Zigbee to MQTT website I went, and I started looking at the supported adapters to see if there was something there that I could buy that might fix my problem. And it was there that I spotted it. My adapter, the Nabucasa Sky Connect, was listed under the heading of Experimental, and the words, don't use these if you want a stable setup. Oh, what the fuck? Nabucasa are a bunch of legends, and they kindly sent me a Sky Connect for free. So when I moved into my house and set up my new Zigbee network, I just plugged that in and assumed that it would work with Zigbee to MQTT. And it did. It worked fine for the first few months, and I didn't think anything more of it. But clearly, it's not quite ready for the prime time when used with Zigbee to MQTT. Now I know for a fact that it was designed for the native Home Assistant Zigbee Home Automation, or ZHA plugin. And everything I've tested and heard from other people is that it works brilliantly with that. But I don't use ZHA. I clearly needed to buy a new Zigbee coordinator, which I was not looking forward to because it meant I would have to repair all 104 of my Zigbee devices. I learned from my mistakes and I went to the supported coordinators list on the Zigbee to MQTT website and I saw a whole bunch of them were actually network connected rather than USB. That meant that I could plug the coordinator into a network outlet in the middle of my house and Zigbee to MQTT could connect to it over the network just like the Raspberry Pi solution. Even better still, some of these coordinators support power over ethernet, so I would only need one cable to both power it and connect it to my network. I ended up choosing the SM Lite SLZB06 coordinator, which has a huge range of features. I'm familiar with the SM Lite company, a really great smart home company based out of Ukraine who makes some amazing gadgets. I really do trust their brand and have been a fan of theirs for a while. And it seriously only cost 30 US dollars, an absolute bargain. This coordinator supports Ethernet connectivity, USB, and even Wi Fi. But I wouldn't recommend running your coordinator over Wi Fi because, for the best reliability, you need the most stable network connection you can get, and that is always going to be hardwired. I plugged it in in the middle of my house and assigned it a static IP address in my DHCP server and connected to it via the web browser. That's right. This thing has its own web server with all kinds of cool stats. You can update the firmware right there on the device, and it even gives you the configuration YAML code that you need to paste into the Zigbee to MQTT to make this work. I copied out this YAML code, went to Zigbee to MQTT, stopped the add-on, pasted the coordinator information into my configuration YAML file, and away we went. There are instructions on the Zigbee to MQTT website about how to change coordinators and they told me to delete a couple of database and backup coordinator files before I started it up again, which I did. I then restarted Zigbee to MQTT, and thankfully it started up successfully. Now the hard part began. I had to repair every single one of my devices. Thankfully, my partner was out of town when all of this was happening, so she didn't get annoyed when the smart home became dumb. The Zigbee to MQTT instructions also recommend that you power off all of the router devices and then power them back on again before starting the repair process. I didn't actually remember where all of my Zigbee devices were, so I figured the best thing I could do was flip the main circuit breaker of my house off for 30 seconds and then flip it back on again. Then the repairing began. I started by pairing the mains powered or router devices nearest to the coordinator and worked my way outwards from there. I then came back and paired all of the battery powered sensors in the location that they would eventually be living. This process took a bloody long time, but it wasn't as painful as I expected. I got it done within a couple of hours. As I'd already had these devices paired before, each device was properly recognized with its name when it repaired, and I didn't need to do anything extra in Home Assistant. They all came back as expected, and my automations then started working as if nothing had happened. This was something I was very thankful for. This all happened about three months ago, and I'm happy to report that I've not had a single device go offline since then, which is a massive release. I would seriously recommend these SM Lite Zigbee coordinators to anyone who is looking for a solid, open source, reliable, network connected option that is specifically designed for Zigbee to MQTT. I paid for this with my own money. This is not a sponsored video in any way. They got me out of a jam and I can once again rely on my smart home, something I will always be grateful to them for.
I wanted to make this video to show you that even us idiots on YouTube who pretend to know what we're talking about make mistakes, and our smart homes aren't always as reliable as they might come across through our videos. If you found this video informative or useful, then please give it a thumbs up and let me know down in the comments. And whilst you're down there writing a comment, why not subscribe to the channel if you like this sort of video? If you're feeling particularly generous, you could give me a super thanks or a PayPal donation, which helps me fund the experiments I do on this channel and tinker with new automation so that we can all learn. I regularly release videos about Zigbee, smart homes, and the automations I use in my house. By subscribing to the channel, you'll know when I've released a new video, and then together we can make your home smarter.